Welcome to Breakthrough. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to click the subscribe button followed by the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. If we know where we're going, maybe someone would follow us. That's so true. If I know where I'm going, someone will follow. <laughs> the purpose behind the plan all along is the harvest. See, because God wants to do what he did in me in someone else. And if I'm not willing to give away what I have, it'll never happen. So nothing will ever flow through me like we talked, right? I'm not asking God to fix things. I'm asking him to flow. Amen? So I don't want him to fix. I want him to flow, right? Uh, <laughs> are you ready? <laughs> Let me just say it like this. Are you ready to be a disciple? Are you ready to discipline yourself a little bit? Amen? Are you willing to listen to what God says and work it, okay? And work it and, and walk in it and, and, and trust Him? Are you willing to be a, a disciplined people? See, uh, in Matthew 28, 18 through 20, we know these verses. I don't, I, I, as soon as I say Matthew 28, everybody goes, oh, that's the, the Great Commission. Go ye therefore into all the world. Preach, teach, and make disciples, okay? <laughs> Amen? And I always wonder how much time are we spending uh, uh, come on, how much time are we spending going instead of just staying where we are, just being what we've always been, just looking over the past? I said it on Friday night. You know, the devil doesn't create anything new. He just reminds you of your past. So he's always bringing up a memory. He's always bringing up a thing. He's bringing up a, a struggle in your life. He's bringing stuff up. He's not creating anything new. He's just reminding you. And, and you know what? If he reminds you enough, You'll believe it and you'll stay right where you are. He's just scared you're going to change. He's scared you're going to move forward. He's scared you're going to trust him a little bit. Amen? And then he goes on, go ye there, teach, uh, teach, uh, baptize in the name of the Father Son, and in the, of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded. There's that word again, command. So we must uh, listen to the command. Listen to what he's telling us in the word. Okay, uh, uh, and, then, and then he gives you the promise, I am with you always, right, even unto the end. Okay, so he's always going to be with us, amen? My direction comes from within, amen? Say it with me. My direction comes from within, amen? But you got to make sure the voice that you listen to, okay, is the voice of truth. It's, it's Jesus Christ we want in our life, right? Uh, so, so I... I, I I, this, this is really powerful. This is a church growing statement I'm about to say, right? Go and tell. Go and tell. Go take and go out of here today and tell somebody else about what great things God is doing in your life. Go tell them to come and see, okay? That's all you have to do. If you want to grow the church, you want to grow the kingdom of God, begin to become an evangelist, all right? Go tell somebody about what God is doing and bring them, just drag them in the door over there and, and just see what God will do, right? See what God will do, right? So we must, we must be moved, okay? Uh, uh, fear, lack, anger, loss, pain, uh, and te tears don't produce lasting change, not real change, regret or shame. None of those things that are going uh, we, to, we, we've got to, I don't know what it is that, that, you need, that God needs to do in your life to get you to move to a different place. I don't know what it is. But, but let's, let's move, amen? I want to be a people on the move, right? And then we want to be removed from whatever it is that is holding us back, whatever it is that ties us back. We, wanna, we want that removed in our life. Uh, <laughs> what would cause you to pack, pack your bags, right, your, uh, and move? What would cause you to do that? What would cause you to take up your tent and, and pack up everything and begin to move? What would cause you? I'm going to tell you the one thing that will do it is purpose. Purpose and faith will move you into the promise of God. Amen? I believe that, that God is uh, working in my life. Right? It's about time. Uh, <laughs> it's a, it's, see, if we could just get this, it's not about me at all. It's about the ones that are coming. It's about the ones that are coming. It's not about me. It's not about me. And if it's ever about me and how I feel about it, and it's, it's not about Him at all. Amen? It's not about me. It's about who's coming. Amen? It's, Jesus was walking one day and he said, he said, lift up your eyes, disciples. Lift up your eyes and look to the field right now. They are already white for the harvest. There's, there's a harvest there for, that needs somebody to go pick. Right? We need to go pick the harvest. Amen? My breakthrough, my breakthrough is your breakthrough. Amen? 
And that's true for you too. Your breakthrough is my breakthrough. Amen? And together, when we both get breakthroughs, amen, when we both get to a place where we have breakthrough in our life, guess what happens? We'll see multiplication because we can't stop talking about what God is doing, right? Uh, the harvest time is just simply this, taking our eyes off of me and mine and setting my feet to the work of reaping fields, amen? Uh, in, in Psalms 51, I, I talked about this a little bit on Friday, and I, I wanted to bring it back this morning because I think it's very powerful. There's this, David is praying a prayer. He's praying a prayer, and he's asking God to restore unto him uh, the joy of his salvation. <laughs> he says in, in Psalm 51, 12 and 13, he says, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Uphold me with thy free spirit, he says. See, salvation it comes from God, amen? It doesn't come from me, doesn't come from a thing, doesn't come from a person, doesn't come from money, doesn't come from fame, doesn't come from influence, doesn't come from anything that's going to happen in the future, doesn't come from anything that happened in my past. It comes from this very moment right now when I realize that he is my salvation. And David is praying because he had made a mistake in his life. He's saying, God, forgive me and restore me now. To restore to me the joy of my salvation. Help me to be who you've called me to be, he says, right? Restore unto me and uphold me with your free spirit. So I am held up by the spirit of God in me. And, and then he says in verse 13, he says, then will I teach transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted. Converted means uh, not just hearing about Jesus, not just talking about Jesus, not just walk into to church on a Sunday morning, not reading your Bible, doesn't mean any of those things, because remember when he said he seen Peter one day, and he said, Peter, uh, the devil has desired to have you, to sift you like wheat. He said, but I prayed for you that when you are converted. So he had been with Jesus all that time, but he was still not converted. He hadn't shifted, amen? He hadn't flipped over to conversion, and conversion means that I'm sold out, amen? The devil can come knocking, but he, he ain't going to find nothing in here because I'm, I'm committed, I'm submitted, I'm, I'm ready to walk with him, amen? So I, I love this, these two verses because uh, it talks about now and then. It talks about not waiting for, for later to be when, amen? Because that's what we always say, you know, I'll be happy when, I'll be, I'll be excited when this happens, I'll be, I'll be happy when there's 100 people sitting in chairs, I'll be happy then, I'll be happy when, I'll preach better if I had more people that would get excited about the Word of God. I would do more if I just, if I just felt like it, if I just felt like this certain thing happened in my life, but I'm going to tell you, that when it will never happen, that then will never be if I don't get excited about what God is doing now, amen? And now, this, <laughs> your belief shows up in your destination. What, what is your destination this morning? Is my destination about, I'll, I'll be with Jesus in heaven? Is that where I'm going? Is that when I'll be happy? I'll, over yonder? And I'm, I'm glad that we have a hope and a promise that goes through the grave to another place. But I'm going to tell you, what about today? What about a hope for today in this moment? When, when is it this moment going to be enough? When am I going to be excited about this moment? Amen. When is it, it going to be time? Amen? So, so <laughs> the purpose, I, I just got this little statement, and I said it on Friday, and I just think it's so powerful. I want to give it to you again this morning. But the purpose of restoration is declaration. The purpose of restoration is declaration. And I think it's so important that we say it. Amen? If I could just take a moment and have a praise break right here because it's really out of character for me and it's all i'm getting a little fear a little anxiety because i don't really do this very often but if, but if i could just do it like this i can't even sing it right i don't have a band i wish i had a piano player behind me and i could say look at what the lord has done come on <laughs> look at what the lord has done you ain't gonna help me at all are you <laughs> he healed my body come on he healed my mind and he's been here right on time every single time amen and i gotta begin to declare that see nobody wants to sing with me come on that was a good perfect opportunity to go Woo! it's a praise break <laughs> you know because look at what the lord has done because that's what we're doing we're walking around telling people look at what he's done and then they look at us and they go i don't want none of that <laughs> Let me go over here. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, come on, people. we got to get to the place where we begin to really appreciate what he has done. He healed my body. He, he healed my mind. He straightened up my relationships. He straightened up my finances. You know what? And look at what he's done, amen? Look at what he's done, amen? 
Woo, that's what I get excited about. That's why I get up here every single Monday, every single Sunday, and that's why I preach, amen. That's why I sing, that's why I worship, that's why I study so hard and long, but not for you. I don't do it for you, I do it for him. Amen. Look at what he's done in my life. Look at what he's done in my life. Look at what he's done. This, <laughs> it's harvest time. It's harvest time. When is our heart going to break for a soul? When is our heart going to break for the one that walks down the, the street? When is it going to happen? When are we going to get our eyes off of ourselves and begin to look at the one that needs us, that needs the Jesus in me? See, because it's not about us. I'm not a container. You are not a container. This building is not a container of the Holy Spirit. Amen? The Holy Spirit we feel in this room doesn't come just for us. It comes for the one that is to come. And we got to get it set straight in our heart. It's not about us at all. It's, it, yeah, okay, God, fix my problems. But if you don't fix me, if you don't fix it, just flow. Just flow through me. If we could just get that. I'm a missionary. I'm a mission. I've got a mission. I've got a, a purpose. And the purpose goes beyond. It's so much bigger than how I feel. It's so much bigger than what I think. It's so much bigger than what is in my heart that I, I, I would like to see God accomplish in and through my life. My life's work is not, a, it's not, a, it's not important to me. The vision of what the future could be is not important to me anymore. I want to see, I want him to flow through. I just want the Holy Spirit to flow through. Ooh, look at what the Lord has done. Oh, it'd be so much better if it was a piano back there. Eh, 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 look at what the Lord has done. Come on. Because yeah, you could do it. I could, I could feel it. I just can feel it. It's a vision I got right there. I don't know. But he, 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 and he was right on time. He was right on time. No, it's an old song. I know. It's really old. But he was right on time every time. Not my time. His time. Amen? It's harvest time. This now moment right here, right now, is a gift from God. How you feel about the gift this morning? How you feel about it? Because I'm telling you, it's irrelevant. It's a gift from God. He's trying to do something in your life. God wants to do something in your life. How do you know that this moment isn't the moment that He's going to call you to a different place? Uh, to, a, to a place... And the mission field somewhere. Is he not going to call you to go to school this next coming school year? You know, some of us, and we're going to we're going to see God transform a whole uh, fifth grade or seventh grade or tenth grade or eleventh grade or whatever it is that grade you're in. Because, and how do you know you ain't called to work to your workplace to that moment? You know, that sitting next to that person that's really aggravating, that talks with that high pitched voice and he squeaks like a mouse, and you're like got all these pictures in your mind about how. How, how come I can't move to a different cubicle? How come I can't be in a, a different place? And if I get a promotion, if I just get a something else, I'll be in a better place. I'll be a better, I'll be a better Christian if I could just have that, God. If I could just have better mom and dad. If they just would have, why couldn't I have been born to somebody that had a million dollars? Okay? I would have been in such a different place. But this is the place. This is the moment. This is exactly where I'm supposed to be. This is the moment. This is my now. This is the now where God will work the most in my life if I would just let him. He healed my body. He healed my mind. Look what the Lord has done. See, <laughs> I don't know. I just can't get by that, I guess. Because what has he done? What has he done? He brought you all the way from California to Rockford, Illinois to save your soul, to change your life, to turn you around, to plant your feet upon a solid rock so that you can begin to walk right. Amen? Amen. I know there's some sister somewhere that's praying for somebody. I know there's, there's some people praying. I know there's some pastors in California that have been praying some prayers. And you know what? God is faithful. God is faithful this morning. He, he ain't forgot. He ain't forgot who you are. He didn't forget your purpose. He didn't forget your destiny. He didn't forget anything that's going on in your life. He knew it all would be there. Amen? And, and you know what? Turn your eyes off of it. Don't worship it anymore. Worship the one that is able. Amen? Worship the one that has done something in your life. Look at what the Lord has done. Look at what He's done. Come on. I think we should be a billboard. We should put t-shirts on that says, 
Jesus did something in me. Jesus changed me. Jesus turned it all around for me. Jesus helped me walk. I couldn't walk before, but now I can walk. I couldn't stand before, but now I can stand. I couldn't see before, but now I can see. I couldn't think right, but now I can think right. Amen? What I was thinking about wasn't what I was supposed to be thinking about. Woo! This necessary now. And I know this don't make sense. This isn't going to make sense because I was, I was telling Joanne about this. And she looked at me cross-eyed and said, that don't make no sense. And I said, that's what God gave me. This necessary now. And she said, how are you going to preach this necessary now? And I said, I have to say, I have to say what God gave me to say. But this necessary now, this now is necessary. See, I, I don't like the now. I don't like it, God. I don't like it, God. But it's necessary. This now is necessary. I can say it 14 times really fast. This necessary now, this necessary, this necessary now. It's a gift from God. This necessary now is a gift. It's my gift. God gave me this gift. And what I do with this gift, it matters. It matters because it has an eternal consequence, not just for me, but for somebody else. Amen? It's got a, it's got an, a, there's a consequence that goes with the necessary now. See, because I can choose to accept it, reject it, look, for, look at it, look away from it, or run into it. But this now is important for my life. Amen? It's important for your life. This necessary now is only necessary for the future necessary now. Come on. You see, I'm, I'm going to mess with you a little bit, okay? Because I have a necessary now, but I have a future necessary now too. And, I, and you know what? The feeling is going to be the same in this past, this present and the past. What, I got a past one over here, past necessary now. Then I have, a, I have a present necessary now, and then I got a future necessary now. And the feeling that I had way back over here is going to be the same as it is right here in this one, and it's going to be the same over here. And I'm going to tell you, none of us are going to like the necessary now in our life. I don't care what necessary now you find yourself in in the past, because we can live in the past necessary now, or we can live in the present necessary now, or we can live in the future necessary now too, because a lot of times we always get that, that feeling of, ah, I'll be happy then when I get to that necessary now. But that's that the now necessary now feeling never changes. <laughs> I don't even know what that means, but it doesn't change. The feeling doesn't change. This now is always going to be the same because that's how we live our life in the now. And we don't live our life in the now. That's the problem because as a Christian, Jesus has called us to this now. This now is the now I want to give him glory. Look at what the Lord has done in this now, in this moment. What has he done? What is he doing for us? <laughs> I'll never get to a happiness place if I'm always looking for it over there. I'm only going to be happy if I'm happy in the ugly feeling I have right now about this now. Come on. That's such a good message. Pastor Everett, I don't know if you ever preach another message in my life. I'll never forget that moment, this moment, because this now moment is necessary. This is what the Lord gave me for you today. Amen? And it's... It sounds stupid to everybody else, but you know what? It, it's not stupid. God uses the stupid things of the world to confound the wise people. Come on. He doesn't want a wise a preach. If he wanted you guys to have a smart, wise pastor, he would have hired somebody else. But he didn't. He hired a, a, a dumb boy, okay? <laughs> Kind of a hillbilly root boy that doesn't know nothing. Never, never be, I'm not that smart, guys, okay? I'm not that smart, but God is... God has given us this now. He's given me this now. You know, yesterday, I had to fix this light. It was on a pole. And you know those telephone poles that got those little posts on them? And you, you, I had to pull my car up and I climb up on the car so I could reach the first pegs. And I started climbing this pole. I climbed a pole and I was checking everyone because I don't know, maybe nobody had climbed a pole for maybe 20 years or something. I don't know. And the pole looked like, you know, you know I've ever seen one of them sticks in the ground at pole? It, it was kind of wiggly. And I was up there, I was about three quarters of the way up and it was doing this. I was like, I was like, hello, Jesus. You see where I'm at today? <laughs> I said, I said, I wish I had angel wings right now because I could just fly a little far. I got all the way up there and I went to reach out to grab this little thing. This, uh, it's called a, a photo eye, okay? 
I reached over to grab it and I was like, uh, 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 uh. my heart skipped a beat and I was like, I'm going back down. So I, I got scared, okay? And so I said to myself, I said, I ain't going back up there. <laughs> That's what I said. So I, said, I called my son and I said, uh, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> I said, I got a problem. I need, I need, I need a hand. So I got, I got I, he goes, I just got home. And I said, well, can you just come over here real quick? And he's like, yeah, I'll come right over. So he drove over there and I gave him my gloves and he just went, eh. okay. And then the pole's doing this. And then he's getting ready to come down. He hanging from the light. I'm like, dude, that, that's bolt. You know, my palms are sweaty. My heart's got butterflies in it, you know? And I realized just because I can't do something don't mean somebody else can't. We got to know the difference, right? When we need help. Amen? We got to know when we need help. I just wonder if our help is in us, when are we going to listen to what he's telling us so that we can change? Amen? Because I don't want you to change. I want me to change. I want me to change. And if I change, you have to change because you're in my life. If you don't like to change, you'll end up leaving my life. But you're here because God wants me to change. Amen? God will never, I say this a lot, God will never bring you to a room, amen, that he hasn't called you to. And I'm going to tell you, if you don't like the room you're in, grow out of it. Amen? This room will be full one day and we will grow out of this place. Amen? Breakthrough Church will grow out of this place. But it will never grow out of it until I grow. The responsibility to grow is me. Point at yourself. Amen? Point at yourself. The responsibility is for you to grow. And that's this. it happens now. <laughs> I just brought it all the way back around because I want you to see this. It happens now. Not, not then. Not when. But now. Amen? <laughs> how many dislike the now moments in your life how, i mean think about yesterday okay not, not yesterday yesterday was saturday but let's think about tomorrow or last week on friday how many how many of us dislike some moments <laughs> i mean all of us can say it amen <laughs> Mine started as soon as the alarm went off. I was like, I got to go to work. Are you serious? It's Friday. It's not Saturday. So I said, I got to go to work. Okay. I didn't like getting up and going to work. I didn't like it. But, but there's always going to be work to do. And I'll probably never like the alarm clock. I don't think I ever have liked it, actually. Right? <laughs> Identify. I, I want you to think about something, though. Identify the now moments in your life, especially the ones that you don't like, and look around. Look around those moments and ask God, show me what it is that you're trying to do in my life right now. Okay, don't look at the person. You know, the person that's doing whatever they're doing. Don't look at that person, but ask the helper. The helper. Ask him, what is it you want to do right now? What are you trying to, to do in my life, right? Uh, uh, let, let me just give you a statement. I, I, I don't want to move past that. I, I'm trying to struggle to not move past too past that necessary now moment. But he, God is so real. Let me just declare this over, the, over us. He is so real, so good that I will give up my life in pursuit of his presence. God is so real and so good that I choose to give up my life. Come on. I choose to give up my life. The moment I don't like, I choose to give up my rights so that he can change me because he's good. I just want to worship him. To worship you, I live. To worship you. I live, I live to worship you. Amen. Or I could do it the other way. Look at what the Lord has done to worship you. Let me just wrap this up for us today. Um, I, back in this series, I, I said this, I declared this. Uh, actually, it's a Steve Martin quote, but he said, 
If you start with nothing, it's the workaround for something original. And I think it's so powerful that God started with absolutely nothing. And he created everything that we see, including giving us life. And he's asking for us, right, to follow through with the plan, right? Don't fix me, God, but flow through me. Amen? Enough is enough. I want, I want him to flow through me, right? <laughs> Maybe your prayers sound a lot like that, right? I know, I know mine have for many years. Fix this, fix it, fix it, Lord. Fix it, fix my relationship. Fix Joanne, Lord. I prayed a lot of prayers like that. Fix her, fix her. And she's been praying the same prayer. Lord, fix uh, uh, Pastor Everett. Fix him, fix him. He's so consistent. <laughs> He's, he, I, wish, I wish he'd be spontaneous. You know what I mean? You can be so, so consistent that you have no spontaneity, okay? Or so spontaneity, so much spontaneity in your life that you have no consistency. And so in the middle between all of those things, we need to have, uh, what is it, moderation. Let your moderation be made known unto all men that they may see your Father and glorify his good work that he has done in you. Amen? <laughs> Look at what the Lord has. I'm going to keep bringing that back to you. And when you leave this week, you're welcome, okay? When you leave this week, you're going to be singing the song. Look at what the Lord has. As you're walking through the grocery store. <laughs> he healed my body. He healed my mind. And it's on YouTube if you want to look it up. Uh, <laughs> I don't know who sang it. Uh, it doesn't really matter. But look at what he did. Okay? All right? Come and fix my problem, my situation. I'm struggling. I need direction. I just need to hear your voice. Because that's what I, I really want to just hear his voice. I want to hear his voice this morning. Right? And there's always going to be enemies in our life that are going to come in and try to stop up the well. Okay? Philistine people are going to come and pour dirt down your well. Okay? They're going to stop up your joy. They don't want no joy coming out of your life because they know that you're an agent of an almighty God and you're here to change stuff. Right? But the, our faith, the father of our faith, Abraham, is digging wells. He dug them. We just got to undig them. Take the dirt back out. Let the joy of the Lord begin to flow. Amen. Let your, let your, your, your faith cause what is already pre-established to be reconfirmed in your life. Amen. So that you can walk it out. Amen. <laughs> I think most of, most of us, when we look for, when we look for direction, I, I, this, this verse kept coming back out of this series. It's John 21, verse 5. And Jesus saith unto the disciples, he said unto them, children, have you any meat? I, I have never forgot that verse from that, that entire series called Direction. And, and what he's asking his disciples, have you heard my voice? Have, do you have any meat? Do you have any word in you? Do you have any substance in you that you can trust in. Amen? And it's the Word of God. The Word of God is what creates everything. It creates word, light and everything else. The Word of God is what we need. And, and, and I, I just want to say this, and then, and then I'll stop talking to you, uh, at least for a moment. But the, my prayer for many years has always been this. God, build something big. I see the vision that you have given me. I see it. I see it, Lord. And I, I've always asked God to do for big things. I've never asked him for little things. I, I take, a, I take the, my little jacket out, and I slap the rock river, and I tell God, where's the God of Elijah? And I would ask him to part the river, okay? And I still have that kind of re faith that's reckless and, and maybe even a little careless to some people, but I just believe God can do big things, things we don't even understand yet, Amen. I don't need to try to figure it all out. I just need to trust him. I need to believe God for something. And so I began to pray prayers like that. And, and, and I never understood, though, the very prayer that I was praying. I was asking God to do something big. But God always, and I don't care if you're a builder or not, you can understand this principle. If God is going to build something big, he's going to dig a hole first. And he's going to dig up every single thing. In, in your life. He's going to turn over every stone. He's going to mess with every relationship. He's going to go in and, 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 and me dig all the stuff out of there. He's going to get rid of all that junk. He don't want to leave nothing unturned. He's going to dig before he goes big. Amen? That's so powerful. 
If my expectation is for God to do something big, I got to understand there's going to be a shovel. Okay? He's going to start digging a foundation. He's going to want to plant, us, plant our feet upon a rock called Jesus Christ. Amen? So stop looking for your direction. All right? Because we already have it. Amen? We already have it in us. And, and He is here now in this moment. Amen? God is good. I, I, I just, uh, I don't, I'm going to close this right now. And I just want to pray with you. And then you can, I'll let you go. Father, in Jesus' name, I just ask, Lord, that you touch us right now from the top of our head to the sole of our feet. And Lord, I ask that you come, come into our heart, Lord, and speak to us, Lord. Lord, give us direction, Lord. Help us understand that this necessary now, this moment belongs to you. And Lord, whatever future now moments come, Lord, those belong to you. Lord, whatever past now moments, Lord, those belong to you, Lord. And I just want to say, and I declare this, Lord, that we release right now any expectation of what can come in the future, Lord. Any, any, any regret for what happened yesterday, Lord. And Lord, I just declare over us right now that we are your children. We are called by you. And Lord, we just want you to reestablish joy inside of us, Lord. Reestablish something that has already been pre-established, Lord. Reestablish it. And Lord, and we will declare, we will declare the works of the Lord in this place, in this place, Lord, to the world around us. And whatever, whatever that world is that, we, that we're, we're getting ready to leave here and go back to our world, but Lord, as we go back to our world, we want to go back changed, different. Open our eyes, Lord. Loose us, God. Help us to smile again. Help us to be filled with the joy of the Lord. Because only there, when we release to you our future, our past, and even this moment, Lord, will we ever experience true joy. And so, Lord, we receive that right now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Can you, as you get ready, uh, you, you can stand with me. As you get ready to leave, I just, uh, I just want you to, to say this with me, okay? I really feel like this is, this is of God. I want you to say it as, as, as soft as you can, but verbalize it. Look at what the Lord has done. Look at what the Lord has done. Look at what the Lord has done. And then turn to your neighbor and tell them, look at what the Lord has done. Amen? Look what the Lord has done. All right? Amen? Amen. God is good. I love you guys. If, if anybody needs prayer, I'm going to ask you to come forward and we'll, we'll pray with you. We love you. God bless you. Have a great week. Look forward to seeing you real soon. Amen? God is good.